given us a gap. Now, what do we know with the CME from the CME or Bitcoin CME futures is once we create a CME gap, time over time, price will migrate to these gaps. And once it's there, it tends to get range bound. And um, from that point onwards, we can assault our next, we can take our next entry. So think of the CME as a simple tool that gives you not a roadmap, but a destination map. The journey is still up to us and our daily technical analysis to decipher that. The reality is, is that we are definitely in a situation where there's divergences and signals on the higher time frames. Remember two weeks ago, I was saying, be bullish, be bullish, be bullish, because the lower time frames were throwing us bearish signals, but the higher time frames were saying there's more to come. Now the higher time frames are, are starting to slow down. So I want to show you how, how to navigate that reel. Something worth noting that uh, the greed is going up again after yesterday. But um, complements of token metrics as well. What we're getting is that the, the bull bear indicator, their algorithmic indicator on bullish and bearish sentiment is moving in the opposite direction. And from their metric, the dominance uh, is turning against Bitcoin and the dream for alt season is now slowly but surely weathering away. So will this come back? Um, so we're going to be so we're going to have to take a look at the dominance as well. Do your huddle bags a favor and subscribe today. Double down, hit that like and notification icon, and let's get charting. But there's a certain trick to trading with divergences, and let me quickly show this. If you take any coin or any price and you switch to the line tool, what you're going to find is that price is going to move, uh, the RSI is going to move down and price is going to move higher. But particularly when that divergence starts, that's that initiating pivot. What you will find is trend and momentum will continue on higher as long as we stay above that line. Okay, so now let's move this on to the next pivot where we had divergence yet again, higher high, double top or lower high in that instance. And what was critical is that price stayed above that point again. So now we know that it's basically the, the recipe of how to navigate divergences. So if we head over to our most recent divergence within the RSI, and this is higher time frame again, guys, remember Bitcoin on the daily. We've got divergences, but now what happened is price didn't stay above it. It fell back and it tested the previous top of the range. So it's still bullish, but the key is, and this is the critical area now, is that once we did this, we were supposed to go on higher and leave this range. And now we're getting sucked back into this range, which means that for a lot of people, this is an insanely bullish environment at the moment, but it's turning into a potential trap because if price were to come back down to this area or even test the initial pivots on the higher time frame, that's going to create that fear and panic. And ultimately, that's what we want. We want the fear and panic because we want to buy the dip. I said it a while ago, wait for the dip. Now, this is how it sets up. It's slow. It's really forgetful or unmemorable in its in its way. Excuse my bad English. Um, and, uh, and that's it. Let me explain what do I mean by uh, a bull trap and the RSI that needs to reset real quick. So I've got Bitcoin here on the daily time frame, and what you can see on the lines is the halvings, uh, halving two, three, and the next one that's on our way, uh, the halving number four. And what is critical or, or really important for us to keep an eye on, and this is a simple tool that you can use, it's just a normal FIB retracement tool. Take it from low to the high of a cycle, that goes through the halving and you just apply a standard FIB retrace to it. And what you will see is when we do this, and I'll move that along until we cross the next halving, is the significance of the 23.6. So price tries to stay above the 23.6 because ultimately, once we reclaim the 23.6 on any retrace, up, reclaim the 23.6, we can think higher high. That's just a, a really good FIB level rule of thumb. So once you reclaim the 23.6, you can think higher high. So if we take this now and we look at the last bull cycle, so I'm going to move this into the previous low and I'm going to move it to the high. What do we have? So there's the high. What do we have? Okay. We had price again trying to stay above the 23.6, remember, because that's our continuation line. 
And if we fall below it, where do we go? We normally go to the golden ratio, the 38 to 618. In this instance, we went even a little bit lower. And this is particularly why maybe a lot of guys tripped up, thinking that there's going to be even lower lows, because if you go below this, that's a really high probability. But that being said, what is happening at this moment, and let's just extend this and expand this and make the screen a little bit bigger, is that we are trying, just like we did in previous cycles, to reclaim the 23.6. And ultimately, a test of the 23.6 is what is potentially needed in order for us to go. So if we do this, we test, we hold, the eyes are, are set for a higher high. But here is a critical difference. Now, that being this is the difference. So let's quickly point, you, point out the difference for you guys. So I'm going to zoom out again, clean the screen so you can see everything in the same context. What I'm going to do now is going to bring in the RSI. Now, when we look at the halvings again, let's look at the halvings in price action point, halvings, and where the next halving is potentially going to be. What happens is when we at that halving time, the RSI needs to reset. Moving averages, stochastic, any technical analysis tool, these higher time frames will reset to a point in order to provoke new bulls to buy. If they all keep on hitting the, the limit on the bearish side of things, nobody's going to buy. Nobody's going to act on that, on those technical analysis. Remember, because we're trading mid-trend. So what you will find is around these times, the RSI resets, goes to the, 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 the bullish side of things. And then from that point onwards, we start driving up. RSI goes up. But what's important is every time we make a low, you'll see that the RSI will do the opposite, make a lower low, which is ultimately where your hidden divergence comes in. The strongest type of divergence, when price makes a higher high, but the oscillator does the opposite. That tells you, buy the fucking dip. That's what you need to say to yourself when you see that. Because you've got a clear, defined line. Once we go below those pivots, like we did there, it's over. You know now that that momentum has gone. The bears have got control. So if you look at the last cycle, because it's always easy with technical analysis, if I explain something that happened in the past, it plays out 100% successful. But as soon as I move it to where we are today and what's going to happen tomorrow, that's where the probability comes in. That's where it's hard to kind of know what's going to happen next. So if you move this on, to where we were the last time around, you can see that the RSI works in a similar way. As we were making higher lows, the RSI was resetting, giving us hidden bullish divergence, moving price on, telling us technical analysis and pro traders out there that there's something behind this. You need to buy the bloody dip, okay? And then lastly, as price rallied up, you had the same scenario. You had hidden bullish divergence, up to a point once the RSI falls below it, divergence is gone, the bull's back broken, and it's over. Okay, so we know now that once we want to, if we want to push off with a big rally, what do we want to see? We want to see an RSI on the high side. It shouldn't look bullish. It should look bearish because traders need to be tricked. Otherwise, if everybody's going to buy the bottom, it's not the bottom. Remember that. So, the RSI has to look, has to be on the other side because for hidden bullish divergence to actually be there to push price up, we need the RSI to actually train down as price is going up. Okay, So it's a different concept. We tend to want to wait for everything to be at the bottom, and that's great because then we can look for nice entries. But a trained establishment means the RSI needs to be high and then trend in the opposite direction than what price is doing. So the only way we will ever really know whether that is happening is if it's actually happening now when we can look back at the data. So let's go to where we are now at the current price action. And yes, okay, we're in a situation where the RSI is high. And if we were to go break out and go bull ballistic, this is what we would want to see. We'd want to see the RSI now start doing this, trending in the opposite direction as price starts moving on. But here's where the difference is. This scenario where this played out in the past was always after the halving. After the halving, when that needs to play out. Before the halving, 
look, there's exceptions to all the rules. You're going to pick up similar events and similar things, technical analysis, speaking wise, but it always really plays off after the halving. And what happens after the halving, which is really unique to, um, to a breakup. Remember these emotional market cycles. Let me just bring up this image for you guys. That, that breakout that we want to see. That's when we really want to see uh, our old season. Uh, and, and, and when everything just goes ballistic. The, 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 the big thing there is, is there's no longer any more sideways price action. So let's mark out the sideways price action so that you can see this in the RSI. So I'm going to leave everything on like this. I'm just going to change the scribble of my pen. Okay, so let's go back to the past. Let's go pre-halving. So what you will find is pre-halving, you'll find that price does get range bound. So let's make that a uh, nice neon green. So you have a range bound environment in which the RSI then resets, creates its divergence before it moves. But once we go past the halving, you can see that range bound environments become less, less prevalent or um, less of an issue. So you, stu you still get these short traps, but the market then moves up, moves up, moves up. It starts stepping up. Range bound environment means it goes sideways and and and. Normal bull cycle goes up, steps, previous highs becomes the lows and 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 and. And if we then look at this area, you can see that range bound again. Do, 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 do. It's moving sideways. It's not stepping up. So let's go to where we are uh, in after the previous halving. You can see that when we zoom into that area as well, the exact same thing happens, okay? Once we are range-bound environments, we're not really trending bullish just yet. Range-bound environments, sideways price action, okay? And that's also areas when we're in that range-bound environment, when the RSI does what? Resets. Range-bound environment, RSI resets. Range-bound environment, RSI resets. Range-bound environment, very small, RSI resets. Range-bound environment, RSI resets. Okay, so once we do this, we don't go higher, and the RSI resets. We need to trade the RSI slightly different than what we would do in the bull cycle. Okay, so let's go to where we are now. Can you see that what we have predominantly is range-bound environments? Okay, so we don't have these quick runs and bump and runs and stuff like that where the market goes. So if we compare price action pre-halving and after the halving and the same here, you can see that we have that same environment where once we go range bound, you have the RSI resetting and price trading, but there's only a select few days where things really start getting bullish. So this brings me to the big story that I want to share with you guys and the alt that I want to share. Everybody's throwing out tiles out there, next 100x gems, it's slowly but surely picking up a next trade, or did you miss out this 100x, this is the next one, and, and if I can be honest with you guys and be real with you guys, the time for those coins is not there yet, and the thing for me that really points that out or highlights that best is the dominance. Why? Because if we look at the Bitcoin dominance, when the dominance starts falling down after we've had Bitcoin at a halving. So excuse all the lines there, guys, but it's a necessary evil. I'm going to try and make the screen as visible. I see Peter is um, doing something else. Peter, I'm going to bring you on stage so that I can see you picking your nose. You, you, you're dropping the ball there, my friend. Um, so what's happening is if you, if you look at the price action pre-halving, now this is Bitcoin at its halving date. It's roughly over there is where the halving date is. You can see that that's when the dominance really starts trending down. And it's then when we get those thousand multiplier coins. So if we, if we take that same trend and we look at where we are at this stage in price action, I just want to line everything up, is that we, we have dominance showing divergence, but we don't have dominance in a lateral range. So Divergence is there, but the dominance potentially still needs to go sideways, chop, which means you're going to have your one-hit wonders and some altcoins establishing themselves. But it's only once we see this big rally after the next halving, where that ever is going to be, that's when the big dominance sell-off normally happens. And there's not just this last cycle. You can look at the previous cycle as well. It's true there as well. It's after the halving 
after Bitcoin stalls out, that's when the dominance sells off. That's when the real multipliers come your way. So for now, the reality is, is that we're in altcoin situation in an accumulation phase. So whether you buy today, tomorrow, next week, or next month, the reality is everything that you're looking at now from buying on spot is setting you up for the next big cycle and what's going to come then. And the risk that you take is, is what if I'm wrong? So guys, for those watching on the, not on the recorded one, watching, um, uh, watching the recorded video, send me some questions, send me some comments. I reply to them. I would love to hear what you guys are saying. Um, and that's it. Let's leave it. Let's leave it there. You guys have a lovely day. And remember, as always, keep hustling.